It's now time to assemble and mount the Whisper winch assembly. First, decide which side of the lift you are going to mount it. In this example, it's mounted on the right side. Begin by attaching the two winch mount bolts to the Whisper winch housing. The winch mount clamp must attach to these winch mount bolts. Thread the pair of 3 8 by 3 8 inch set screws into the holes at the top of the winch mount clamp and tighten them against the Whisper winch, locking it in place. Insert the three 3 8 by 2 and 3 quarter inch mounting bolts into the winch mount clamp and secure with flange nuts. Only finger tighten at this time. The winch mount will attach to the lift side upright that's 12 inches taller than the other uprights. With the hub set screw loosened, slide the raw cable end into the slotted opening on the hub. Tighten the set screw with an Allen wrench. And using an Allen wrench, mount the cable roller guides to the winch assembly, sandwiching the cable in between. In this demonstration, we mounted the winch on the right side. Bolts face the front. Use caution, this assembly is heavy. The winch mount clamp should be close to flush with the top of the lift side winch upright. Tighten the bolt securely. Keeping tension on the cable, take up some of the cable slack by turning the winch shaft clockwise. Attach the spinner knob to the wheel. Bearings on each side allow the knob to spin freely. Secure to the wheel using a 3 8 by 2 and a quarter inch bolt and 3 8 inch nut. Tighten securely, but don't over tighten. The spinner knob should spin freely on its bearings when attached to the wheel. Snap the knob cap into the knob handle and tap lightly with a hammer in the center of the knob to secure. Be careful not to bend the cap. You're now ready to thread the wheel onto the winch shaft. Thread the wheel clockwise, carefully at first. You must thread the wheel completely onto the winch shaft so that it's fully compressed against the brake pad. Secure the wheel using spacer washers. You must use the supplied spacer washer or washers to mount the wheel to the winch through the center hole with the supplied bolt. Be certain to allow for a 1 8 inch gap between the wheel and the spacer washer as shown. The winch brake is operating properly when the operator stops spinning the wheel and the rack stops moving to a lower position at the same time. The Shoremaster cantilever lift requires bunks or cradles to be assembled prior to use. Begin by assembling the pads, inserting small bolts through the non-adjustable cradles for the front rack. Tighten these 5 16 by 1 inch bolts and nuts securely. Assemble all parts as shown here. Mount the non-adjustable cradles to the pre-drilled holes on the front lift rack as shown. Adjustable cradles are fitted to the rear of the lift rack. The pads mount with 5 16 by 1 inch carriage bolts and 5 16 nuts. Mount the cradle legs to the cradle channels with 3 8 by 3 and a half inch hex bolts and 3 8 inch nuts. Do not over tighten these bolts. Lower the legs into the adjustable cradle pockets and bolt into place using the shorter of the remaining 3 8 inch carriage bolts. Mount the adjustable cradle pockets in the desired positions on the rear of the lift rack. Adjust the cradle channels to the desired position and tighten all previously assembled bolts. Note that these adjustments will fit the specific boat intended for the lift. 
Install the caps on the lift uprights as needed. A motor stop is available for the Shoremaster cantilever lift. Although the assembly shown is for the vertical lift, the procedure is identical. First, bolt the adjustable motor stop frame to the left and right motor stop legs using the supplied hardware. Slide the channels on the motor stop legs over the rear rack beam and center the motor stop on the beam. Bolt it securely in place. Your Shoremaster lift is now ready for installation. Remember, safety first. Wear protective gloves, clothing, and eyewear when installing the lift. At least two people are required for proper and safe installation. Although the installation shown is for a vertical lift, the procedure for installation is virtually identical. Begin by measuring the water depth at the deep end where your lift will be. Now, come forward roughly 10 feet and measure again in the shallower water where the lift will be. You want the lift to be level. Pre-adjust the leg height to level the lift between both measurements. In this example, the water is 3 to 4 inches deeper at the rear of the lift. Each adjustment hole raises or lowers the lift approximately three and a half inches. Obviously, pre-adjusting the lift height on shore is easier than making adjustments when the lift is in the water. If the boat has a keel, measure both the width and depth of the keel. Measuring keel depth when the boat is on the trailer is a handy way to determine clearance, measuring from the roller or bottom of the trailer bed. Too much clearance is better than too little. Measure the cradle adjustments to match the hull or keel of the boat. The cradles are easy to adjust. Now for the installation. The lightweight Shoremaster aluminum lift pushes easily into the water. Align the lift to the dock. Again, although the lift shown is a vertical model, the procedure is the same for the cantilever lift. When the lift is in position, make sure each of the footings is stable. Also, double check the rack of the lift to ensure that it's level. The lift must be installed to be both level and stable. This is extremely important. This completes the assembly and installation training of the Shoremaster cantilever lift. Assembly and installation of the lift canopy is covered in a separate chapter of this installation DVD.